Well, good morning, everybody. It's Chris here at Blue Rhino Safaris. <coughs> Excuse me. I said I would do a video on the um, trip that I just had to Morocco. And um, you don't have to watch this video. There's nothing in it that's important to note. The f only important thing, as a reminder, we are off on our first trip for 2023 to the mighty Urania River, uh, starting up uh, on the Lesotho border all the way down to Alexander Bay, Ruchtersveld, Orange River, uh, Namakwa 404 Eco Route, all of that stuff included. I have a spot for one more vehicle. If someone is interested, we're leaving in just about a month. You are still in time. So if you're looking for something to do, something interesting, something that you probably haven't done before, then um, join this trip. It is always a fun trip. I enjoy it. It's very balanced. It's South African, blah, blah, blah. So uh, if you want to join, please uh, let me know quite urgently. So let's switch over to the um, to the report back on, on the trip that I just had. So when I decided to do this trip, when I wanted to see Morocco, now Morocco, uh, the languages predominantly spoken is Arabic and French, and it's an ex-French colony. So I thought, well, I haven't been to Paris. I've been to many other places, but not Paris itself. So let's do Paris over Christmas and New Year and then go to Morocco in the beginning of January. And the idea was to, to get a bit of a Paris thing and just visit a few sites. Personally, I, I haven't seen it. I've been to the other cities. Um, and that's the way we did it. So I'm going to show you all the pictures uh, that, we, that we did. Some I'll skip over quite quickly. But otherwise, people often ask me, what do you do for holiday? Where do you go? How do you do it? And um, I'm a professional guide, I'm a professional tour operator, I'm in tourism. So obviously people are interested to know how I um, see the world in tourism. So I'm going to go through it. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. It's not a problem. But for those interested, I'm just going to quickly go through it and see if I can keep it as short as possible. Um, one, I only took a cell phone. I didn't take anything else. It was just my uh, iPhone SE that I took and so all the pictures were taken with my iPhone SE. Uh, second thing, I did not take pictures in the uh, Medinas in Marrakesh. I'm not a big fan of the snake wranglers and the monkeys and all of those things in the markets. It's, it's something that doesn't work for me, but it works for other people. So um, I also didn't take pictures specifically for tourism. I took pictures more for the website if I needed to to do a trip and I have some backup um, of pictures on on the for the website in future. So first trip or well, first photo is luggage. It's always a good idea to take a picture of your luggage. If it gets lost, someone's going to say, what does it look like? And you actually have a picture to show what your luggage looks like. Uh, in Doha, we fly with Qatar Airways. In Doha, we needed something to eat. So the Burger King at an astronomical price is probably the only food that um, was worth doing uh, in Doha. Arriving in Paris, this is the RERB train that you catch from Charles de Gaulle into Paris itself. And um, yeah, if you've never been there um, or never been on the metro, the um, getting your luggage from A to Z is rather a job. Uh, lots of stairs and um, changing trains is not that easy. And this is just a picture of Matty slogging up after two flights. I, of course, I offered to help her, but if you know Matty, you know Matty. Um, <clears throat> this is just our first view of the Paris sky, arriving at the metro station in the um, Vosgerard area that we were in. And then, of course, first thing next day, you do the normal touristy stuff. So a lovely blue day we had the next day. Uh, it was rather cool, but this is now on the 28th of December, so it's just after Christmas. And um, yeah, a lovely day in Paris with the Eiffel Tower. If you've seen the pictures of the Eiffel Tower. So um, the river that runs in Paris, you have the left bank, you have the right bank. And the, that's what people refer to is on the left bank, there's certain places to stay and places to eat and markets that you can visit. And on the right bank, there's um, also similar things, but they differentiate between the two, left and right. If you go around the Eiffel Tower, you get to um, a nice stepped area uh, with a viewpoint of the city itself. And then just up the road, we just walk there to the Arc de Triomphe, built by um, 
crazy guy. Um, yes, you know who I'm talking about. Um, Napoleon, um, after the revolution. Uh, so this is a Napoleonic architectural thing. Um, very nice to visit. Very impressive buildings. If you've never been there, you can go underneath it. If you want to go to the top, you pay a little bit extra. And then being just after Christmas, a lot of the markets were still open. This is the Deville Hotel uh, in Paris that we visited um, in the evening. A lot of nightlife happens in, in these cities. Um, most people work until five, six-ish, and then they go out for dinner and do the markets and everything. So the, the time in European cities, or in Paris at least, shifts. Um, it, they're not early morning people, uh, Morocco neither. They are uh, midday, afternoon and evening people. This was the hotel lit up in this blue with a light show um, that was happening in front of it. Um, Notre Dame in the background, you can see there, so very close to Notre Dame, um, Hotel de Ville, a very a well known Christmas market in Paris. And you see how many people there are, um, just after the whole COVID thing happened, uh, it was all brilliant. And of course, if it's so cold, then you need a bit of Vinchot. Vinchot is like Glühwein, the French version of it, uh, so we had a nice Vinchot. This was just a picture to show the amount of people standing in queues for rides for children. It's it's crazy. It, it was amazing how many people were out there looking to do stuff in the evenings. And then in the Christmas markets, I would love to go back to Paris over Christmas. It's it's really great. Um, it's cold. It's winter. Yes, but oh, there's so much happening there. Um, and of course, they have champagne and oysters that they sell. This is oyster season as well. So um, it's oysters and champagne at the markets. Uh, where they do these things. Then we went to a, a show that they had over the festive season, not a show, a display of um, this Mondes, uh, the monsters, and uh, it's it's a it's wire frames with um, coloured uh, membranes and lights inside, and they were talking about the small monsters. Um, of the forest, of the felt, of the house, um, and we went to the, the show itself. And this is just to show um, the detail that they went into. Now this thing is huge, you, you'll see there's people walking around it, um, and the spider moves. Um, but the, the display is, is absolutely <laughs> it's amazing. It's huge. If you go through it, it's a massive display. And so we did. Uh, we visited this park to, um, or the show in the evening to to have a look at the lights. And it makes lovely pictures. And it was it was such a nice experience to to go there. Then um, I think the next day we were off to Versailles, uh, Jeteau de Versailles. So this is the palace, the old palace of King Louis, and uh, just a few pictures of the. Um, of the hotel inside this was Louis himself he wore a wig because he was bold and because he wears a wig everyone wears wigs so if you see people copying um, or, or having a trend in a European country um, of those ages then the king normally would set that trend so because he was bold he wore a wig and therefore everyone else in the country wore wigs so if you see this French um, Middle Ages uh, depiction of, of French life then you would see people with wigs because the king wore a wig <coughs> that's how they did it this is the hall of mirrors inside the palace uh, palace of Versailles, and it's just a picture king louis would have looked into this mirror himself at some point um, lovely rooms this is part of the seven rooms of the king uh, paintings on the ceilings uh, and the gardens as well if you go in summer then these gardens are really nice to go to it was a very windy and rainy day on the day so we were just inside for most of it uh, as we went through the paintings in the different rooms uh, depicted as um, as you walk through it uh, and I one thing I realized was the great painters of the day were not just great because they were good painters they were great because they painted these massive paintings these things are absolutely enormous um, 
so if you've been to Windsor Castle and those places, you've you've got an idea. But it's fascinating how how big these paintings actually are. Um, still part of the palace in Versailles. This is Joan of Arc that was part of um, part of the war in the king's time. This is an interesting painting of Napoleon. He um, he went over a, a little mountain range and he was depicted like this in, in the portrait. Um, interesting facts. There's a Hannibal sign right there. So the painter refers to the fact that Napoleon compared himself to the great Hannibal um, trek over the mountains. So Napoleon um, had this painted, uh, but he didn't do it on a horse. He did it on a donkey. Um, but he said, you know, I need to be painted properly. So let's do the horse thing quite interesting the uh, King Louis uh, desk he had a single key so he could lock all his paperwork up in his desk very elaborate very pretty this is the private quarters of King Louis this was the royal throne <laughs> uh, yeah if you do a private tour then they show you the uh, this the to uh, toilet was there and this is the bath uh, they would put the well this is the bathroom so whatever they would do in here is what would happen um, all public. Uh, the king, of course, did everything in public uh, just to make sure that um, people know where he is and what he does. So even his royal throne was in public. Uh, he would have an audience with people uh, in that case. This was a picture I took. This, this portrait was taken with a single bristle brush. Just one hair on the brush. The painter uh, painted this, this picture. It's not very big. It's quite small. So he, he could only use one, one hair. On a brush to paint this whole picture fascinating um, it's all in there the life of louis uh, the outside of versailles and then the next day we did the louvre now if you go to the louvre or several different of these um, displays then you have to check in advance because they open some uh, displays on certain days and some are closed so i went specifically to the louvre on the saturday because the egyptian uh, displays open as well as the great artworks um, who are open on the same day so you buy your ticket on that day and you can see both of them if you go on a different day then one would be closed and you have to go back a, a separate day lovely morning in paris um, nice and crisp but uh, a lovely morning uh, in the morning and then if you go in into the louvre the first thing people go to is mona lisa um, it's a fascinating painting if you haven't seen it in real life um, pictures doesn't really do it uh, any justice people say it's small it's not that small it's actually quite a big painting uh, but it's behind glass and well protected but if you stand in front of it and you look at it look at it firsthand it's just fascinating um, I did a, a, a project when I was at school on da Vinci and this is one of his paintings I uh, did a lot of biblical stuff and blah 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 so that was just for me da Vinci was quite cool uh, and then the Egyptian side that I wanted to see as well. I'm not sure if I'll ever get to Egypt, so I wanted to do the Louvre's uh, Egyptian um, wing just to see what it looked like. And to see these things in real life, you've always seen the pictures of it, but to, to see it in real life is, is, is very different um, than, than just um, interneting it. This is the largest cosophagus, I think they call it, in... in um, in the display it's a it's a stone one so they always believe that that when someone dies he goes to another life and if he goes to another life he needs to be prepared for the for the other life so you bury people with what you need for the next life and therefore you have these big um, coffins um, and then also the bodies need to be preserved because you need to um, you need to still at least have a body and this is this is the mummy on display there i've never seen one in real life but this was um this is the one in the louvre that they have on display there so they try to preserve the person as as best as they can <laughs> for the afterlife burying him with whatever he needs his slaves and his dog and his cat and his rings and his money and all of that stuff uh, just under the pyramid in the Louvre, lovely picture. And then another Christmas market, this was close to um, Place de la Concorde. And this is um, one of those spots where you can buy a, a Sami. So they have these electric 
heaters on the cheese that melts the cheese. You order your bread and they put some cold meat on it and they scrape off the molten cheese onto the bread. And you can have a lovely um, tubroki for for it. It's, um, it's one of the best known French uh, meals over the Christmas period. Um, and I'm sure in, in different times as well. I think it's actually a, like a Swiss um, setup. And then Place de la Concorde, if you see the uh, Tour de France, you would have seen these things, uh, Arc de Triomphe in the back, back end. And then on New Year's Eve, we visited the um, Paris itself. We were there for, for New Year's. And this is um, from Sacré Cour, um, the church on the hill. Lots of steps. Don't stay there. Don't carry a bag up those stairs. You'll never survive it. Um, but very, very pretty to um, to actually see. This is the church, Sacré Cour, and um, the sparkles of the lights. <laughs> Happens every hour um, on the Eiffel Tower, but this was now the first. Um, this was on the hour. Uh, at midnight, um, January for four minutes, five minutes past past midnight, um, and then we went off to Morocco. So this is arriving in Marrakesh. First day, we stayed in a hotel for the first two nights. We went uh, into Marrakesh Center. This is uh, Kutubia, uh, one of the mosques, uh, better known mosques in uh, Marrakesh. Uh, very pretty. Uh, they started a second mosque on the side, which was never finished. And then we got our motorhome. This is motorhome. Bags are still in the aisle. Ladder still on the bed. This is for the second bed. So the second bed is in the front of the vehicle and it drops down uh, electrically. So you have a motor that puts it up and down so you can put um, extra people in there. And then we headed out to, uh, to the Atlas Mountains, another... Uh, tower, minaret, I think they call it that uh, we went past. The landscape, green. It was it was lovely landscape, blue skies, green. Um, everywhere that you go, you have these, these Arabic slash Portuguese um, influenced architecture and um, vegetation is very desert, palms. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's almost a combination of Zanzibar, Tanzania, Lesotho, Namibia, and Cape Town. It, it's one of those weird combinations, but absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. A lot of trees in the Atlas Mountains. Um, lovely ge geology. Uh, if you go through there, spectacular passes. Um, and then every now and again, there's these little markets with carpets and tagines and all kinds of things that they sell next to the road and coffee stops. Um, if you buy a coffee next to the road, they have these little Renault vans with a full espresso machine in the back. Generator, espresso machine. You stop there, you pay 10 dirhams or a euro or whatever, and uh, it gives you, and you ask for a, a cafe, and you get a single shot espresso. That's it. There's no lungos and mochaccinos and stuff it's just coffee and then it's a single shot espresso and you have that and you carry on and 10 minutes later there's another one so if you want another cup you stop at the next one and you get another cup of coffee um, everywhere especially around the bigger cities you get the um, these coffee stops next to the stop sign <laughs> right there um, but yeah other coffee stops and eateries uh, everywhere that you go Lovely scenery, mountain passes, you're driving the Atlas Mountains. So um, it reminds me a lot of Namibia and Lesotho if, if I drive through there. Gorgeous pictures, um, just, just a lovely place to drive through and, and actually experience. This is also an area where they have a lot of minerals. So you see guys, or, or crystals, you see guys next to the road selling crystals. Um, we did look at it, it was some sulfur type crystal that has different colors. Uh, this is actually a picture of one of them. It's a red inside there. And these guys are all selling these crystals uh, next to the road. Roadworks at the time, so we had to deal with a little bit of roadworks, but didn't bother us uh, too much. So this is in our motorhome, driving through the Atlas Mountains, seeing villages and markets and uh, these type of things. You go into a village and quite often you have this a very definite gate that you go through that um, shows you that you are now in 
in this village. You drive on the right hand side of the road, of course. So it's a left hand drive vehicle. Getting a get you have to get a bit used to it, but it's not too difficult. I'd been a do. This is where Game of Thrones had one of their scenes. There's a few places in Morocco where Game of Thrones were doing filming. filming. Um, on the coastline, Ezoria, um, it, it's wrongly pronounced, but down there, um, south of Casablanca, there's a f there was a few scenes um, shot there. So Game of Thrones in Morocco is, is intricately linked as far as some of these uh, scenes go. Been bit I'd been a do is a uh, well known. You can walk in there. Uh, we didn't. We just we were a little bit late, so um, we just stopped on the opposite hill, had a coffee, took some pictures. Um, I've seen enough videos of people walking inside there. There's not much to see. It's just a abandoned village um, used for for whatever. Um, and then you have this, these sceneries, and pictures does not do it. Uh, I'm sorry. I I can't take a picture of. Of anything that's worth it uh, as far as the landscape goes because once you're there you realize how big and massive it is so this was a panoramic that I did um, with a lovely mountain range we stopped here for coffee and um, of course your your kettle and your coffee is all inside the vehicle so you can just stop next to the road and chill for an hour and then off you go again nice thing of of a motor home. so it looks very guru like almost or Busmanland, um, Kalfinia area, if you look at it like that. Um, lovely scenery. Our motorhome, we were looking into the sun, sorry. Um, and then s the snow on the mountains, uh, there's still, well, it's winter, so there's snow on the Atlas Mountains, which makes it um, extra special. We were traveling through the Valley of Roses, um, and you go through these little towns everywhere, carved into the mountainsides built in the riverbeds um, wherever you go you you have this um, this very interesting um, scenery so these were little gates so there's a police stop but no issues there uh, and then the palm trees and this is arriving in a in one of the bigger villages um, on on the road just just to show you what it looks like just the colors and the feeling of of the place is it's just very very cool and then you find your camels and it <laughs> this this is not a good shot of camels but this is the reality uh, it was like a dump site that washed down the river and the camels were there so i said to matty well let's take the picture because the camels are at least in the picture but we don't want all the blue um and then we found a spot that we could at least have a camel picture without all the rubbish. This is coming into Mezuga. You can see the, the desert in the background. So I actually stopped for, for the picture. And um, yeah, so there's the dunes in the background. Those are the dunes that, that they take the tourists into with camels or 4x4s or motorcycles or, or whatever. Just a picture of the entrance. Remember to keep right. Again, you have your uh, mosque, the tower on the mosque. And then some of the pictures of the desert itself. You can see the tracks. You can see people walking around. So, a lot of activity um, in Majruga. Our neighbors in the campsite, they were parked next to us. And then you do your cooking in your vehicle. On this day, we decided to have... Um, stir fry um, we got some good meat that we could chop up and then we did uh, a stir fry for the evening panoramic of the campsite in Majuga. Um lovely place nice place to visit next time i was there only for one night next time we'll be there for two nights and the afternoon so enough time to chill a little bit walk around in town have a coffee and see what's out there and then you have these oasis now it's mountains and desert and then suddenly you have all of these palm trees and then you know that you are at an oasis basically um, again the scenery and our motorhome uh, someone selling something next to the road we were now going back through the atlas mountains up towards mcness and then suddenly you have this incredible view of green 
and a, a big farming community in Morocco. Um, a lot of agricultural products, um, olives, um, various other planted stuff. Um, incredible to see a nice view from this spot. It is also a, a viewpoint and you, you're you looking down towards uh, Mac, uh, not Mac, uh, Marrakesh on this side and the coast Casablanca somewhere there. So it's sort of in a southwesterly direction that you're looking at at this um, the locals were there taking pictures our motor home on the side and just a lovely view as we are on our way um, north next day we went to Volubilis uh, you've seen the pictures on the other video uh, old Roman outpost um, really nice to to just walk through people take pictures in prominent places there were baths and fountains and public toilets, um, these mosaics on the floors of some of the rooms. Um, the guide offered to take some pictures of us uh, when we were there. And it's just, it's just fascinating to, to actually walk through there. I, I found that one of the top five things to do in Morocco was to visit Volublis. Uh, very special. And then just a little bit further on, you get to the town of Shefshawan. It's not Shefshuan. Everybody talks Shefshuan. It's not. It's Shefshawan. Uh, the locals will tell you it's Shefshawan. And if you look at the spelling, it's Shefshawan. Uh, the blue city. Um, again, you have these modern style buildings together with the old town. Uh, the campsite is around here. Um, but... A glorious place we arrived late in the afternoon so the sun was baking nice onto it and the photo doesn't do it any justice it, it looks much more pretty when you get there um, this was the campsite we got there and the guy said we're full um, but you can stand here just park in the entrance <laughs> so we we had to park in the entrance um, but if we have more motorhomes going through then I would make a booking to to make sure that we can get there and then you get Wi-Fi in almost all campsites. There are Wi-Fi that you can pick up. If it's not in the at the vehicle, then you'll find it at reception. Uh, free Wi-Fi that you can just log on to and use, which works very well. Um, and then the password obviously has to be rather easy, otherwise it's not going to work. <clears throat> Next day we went for a walk in the Medina in Chefshawan. And oh, it's... <sighs> can't describe it. Pictures doesn't do it any justice. If you walk around there and you get the feeling of it, it's just so different. We were on our way to Casablanca, so we were there quite early, which means the shops were not quite open yet, but we found some fresh bread uh, just close to this uh, center. This is the center of the Medina. Uh, there was a, a, a butcher and a baker just off the road here. We, had, we found one or two nice freshly baked breads. We had some cheese and cold meat in the car and we had lunch in the day along the road somewhere. But a lovely place to visit. And then when you get back onto the highways, it's a toll road, you pay your toll, you're on the highway, massive bridges. Um, this is going uh, towards Casablanca, I think it was, on our way on the day. Uh, a glorious bridge that you, um, that you can drive through, which is quite spectacular. I think there was a video. Yeah, absolutely magnificent bridge to see. And then I had a little bit of a braai. This was quite interesting. I took the video because of the charcoal's reaction. Um, this is the local charcoal that they use when they cook their terrines. Uh, terrines there. Um, whatever. But yeah, what the charcoal is doing there, it's so strange. Um, it's not the charcoal we know, and it burns very quickly. You can almost light it with a match. Um, very much like the cob charcoal that you buy, if you ever use the cob. Um, they have these discs of charcoal. It does exactly the same thing. It's, it's super cool. <laughs> Had a local beer. Um, you can see there's, there's not a lot of braai places, but I found a spot where someone did, made a fire previously, and it was next to this... Um, a little bit of a rubbish dump but um, yeah we had our bribe for the evening and all was good then the next day we went into Casablanca and 
in Casablanca, this is about it. There's there's one or two restaurants that you can visit. There's the little coffee shop that was in the movie, which today doesn't really mean much anymore. Uh, it, it it doesn't resemble anything decent <laughs> these days. But if you want to visit it, you can. This is by far the, the most impressive structure uh, that, that we saw in the whole of Morocco. Uh, the Hassan II uh, Mosque in Casablanca. Uh, glorious. Next to a little coast, there were a few people swimming, um, built out into the ocean. And it's, it's just stunning. They, they close the, the mosque off at certain times. And then... Um, they open it at certain times for walking around and then they open it uh, again at other times if you want to go inside. 60 stories high. It would be the highest building in South Africa if it was built in South Africa. Seventh biggest mosque in the world. Um, the mosaic that you see it took 6,000 people five years to complete. Uh, if you look at the, the uh, mosaics on the fountains, uh, it's it's just absolutely gorgeous and then if you walk back because you want to take a picture of the mosque we walked back as far as we could and you, you still can't get it into into your picture it, it's just too big um, so going across to the other side of the of the bay is about the best place where you can find this lovely picture and that was our days in in uh, Morocco uh, we finished up we flew back to Paris um, we decided to visit Morocco from Paris, uh, which means the stopovers, we could decide how long. It's not this three stopover, 20 hours layover, sitting in an airport thing. We decided to fly to Paris and then spend time there, fly to Morocco, spend time there, back to Paris, spend time, and then back to South Africa, just to make the traveling a little bit more comfortable. So um, the next day we went through, we were there only for the night. Um, and I said, well, I haven't done the Moulin Rouge yet. It was the only place I haven't seen that I wanted to see. So uh, we went through to the, to the Moulin Rouge. Um, very impressive spot. Also nice eateries. Um, Paris have little eateries uh, everywhere that you go. And that was our trip. It was... Um, it was really good. I I enjoyed it very much. This is what I do um, if I have to do a holiday. Um, I go and see cities uh, all over the place. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed just a brief insight in what we would do for a holiday. And I um, hope you can join us for the Morocco trip in 2024. I haven't decided what I want to do as an add-on. I... Uh, Matt and myself were talking about doing maybe the Bordeaux region as well as uh, Champagne uh, so into France again but not the city and this time just going around the wine regions and visiting the, the wine regions because we are there in um, end of February March, it will be in March um, we'll do it on the back of, of Morocco and then we can do uh, as the summer approaches Europe um, we can do a little bit more. So that's it um, I hope you enjoyed it have a great day and hope to see you on a trip soon. Don't forget about the Orange River trip happening in three weeks, three and a half weeks. Um, get your booking in if you still want to go. Cheers. Wow.